everyone, it's Julia. This week I have a thrifted project to share with you. One of the things I really like to do, and just for inspiration, is to go into the thrift store, pick out a couple items, and then create with those items. And usually when I'm in the store, I'll have a pretty good idea once I see something, what I wanna turn it into. But um, a little, So more about that in a little bit. But I wanted to also mention that I had a couple people um, comment to me in wanting the template that I used in last week's video. And so I put it up as a free um, download on my, on my blog, my website, and I will link that down below for you. And when you go to my blog, if you follow the link, um, the actual download button is about halfway down on the blog post. So, so just read down a little bit and then push the button and it'll take you to the template that you can just um, print off yourself. And I'll link down below also the project that I that I use for this in case you missed that project. But it's just a simple design, but it's real, it's whimsical and it's just kind of a fun folk, folklore or folk arty looking tree. And so I will link that down. And also I did um, the words that I used on that project in three different sized fonts. So that'll be there for you too. Um, but yeah, let's get going on this thrifted project. I found this beautiful piece of fabric at the thrift store. It's a decorator print, so it has a little bit um, a little bit heavier than a, than a quilting cotton. It is 100% cotton and it has a sheen to it. Um, this piece measures about 13 inches by about 17 inches. And I have already cut it down. It was a little bit bigger than this. I also found this chevron print. Um, now the fabrics at my thrift store are about $2 a yard. And I want to make a clutch out of this. It just, I thought it just had a beautiful look to it. I think it's going to be great as a, like an evening or, or a, just a, a fun purse to have. And I also had to found this doily. And then I stamped this image. And I thought that image would look really cute on there somehow. I want to make an envelope clutch. And this, um, just because I, I just feel like it, it has a really cool print on it. Um, I'm just turning the top of it trimming the corners so make it look more like an envelope. I am going to be making um, straps for this bag, but they will be removable. I want to quilt this so I have a warm and natural batting on the underneath side. I want to talk a little bit too about the even feed foot or the walking foot. In case any of you are new to sewing, it actually has a feed dog on the bottom of the foot, similar to the feed dog on your on your um, plate or your um, sewing machine. And it just attaches in place of your regular um, foot. And then this little thing is a, a quilting guide and it just, on my machine, it sticks right on this walking foot. On some machines, it'll stick right on the shaft of your presser foot. But it just is a guide so when you're doing your channel quilting, you have your, your widths even. I'm just putting that into place, you can kind of see what it looks like. And then you can move that guide to whatever um, width you want. So here I go and I'm just gonna channel quilt this going straight down. Notice that I cut my batting a, a little bit bigger and that will be trimmed after I do the quilting. And again, this even feed dog is going to just get everything um, fed through at the same time. It's wonderful for doing vinyls as well or leathers. You can see what it looks like, nice and straight. And then just going to be trimming down this batting. I'm going to list everything down below for you if I'm using any supplies. I want to add a back pocket to this. My pocket measures 13 inches by 9 inches and I have a 14 inch zipper. That zipper will be cut down. My first thing I'm going to do is draw a rectangle on the back of this. It's going to be seven inches by about half inch, a little bit less than a half inch wide, about three eighths of an inch. And I'm just getting that centered on this piece. Now this is the back side of the lining and I'm just using a, a pencil for this. You don't, you won't see this stick, uh, the pencil mark. 
folding this now so I can see where I want this. It's going to be in the back of my little clutch. I'm just getting that to where I want it. Now I'm going to put some pins just to keep it secured while I sew this. I'm going to be stitching right on that rectangle and I'm going to be using a really a tiny stitch about a 1.8 and now you can see my stitching and now again I am marking my cutting line and I use a just a dotted or dash line for this and then on the corners I do a little triangle you do not um, you do you cut right into that corner but you do making certain not to cut your stitching I'm using my my Fisker little snip it seems to work really well for this to get into these corners and again being very careful not to cut into my stitching I use my wool mat underneath here and just going to be pushing all this to the back side of my little bag and then just doing some pressing as best you can just to get as much of that to the back side as possible just spraying with some water there it's not perfect and you'll see there it, it does oh, pucker a little bit on the corners on the back side but on the front side it actually turned out to be really smooth I'm going to be flipping it around here and you can see and again working a little bit more on that just trying to hide that lining as best as possible and just giving it one more press on to my zipper now I do want to take my zipper and go to the sewing machine and secure that end just by going back and forth with a, with a zigzag that end is secure now and now it's onto my tape this is a quarter inch it's called um, sewing tape it's 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 um sticky on both sides and it will wash away just peeling that uh, that paper off to expose that other sticky side and then I'm placing my zipper and just getting it centered over this little opening this tape is just the slickest stuff when you're doing a zipper like this you don't have to pin and nothing gets really in caught or in the way and it just holds it securely while you sew and then again it washes away if any of that that tape shows now notice on the corner here you see a little bit of that metal I want to do that just so I don't hit hit my needle with it to my sewing machine I'm just using my zipper foot here and I'm just top stitching all the way around this opening such an easy way to put a, a zippered pocket um, used to be afraid of zippers, but once you get going on them, they're really easy to do. Just snipping this excess zipper off. And then meeting that pocket to the top, and I'll be stitching both the sides. Just folding that bag away so that lining or that pocket is exposed there. And then I go across the top of it as well. Pockets in. I want to add this doily I just think it just it just fits with it um, so I'm just getting it where I want it and just placing some pins and back to my sewing machine now I have my free motion foot on this time and my um, feed dogs are dropped this is a, the perfect thing to add a doily or something like this because I can go both sideways and back and forth and it's easy to get it on that way and this is starting to look like something I'm, I'm gonna be adding the snap first and I I'll show you at the end I kind of messed up on this I I should have maybe done a, some kind of a different closure but I'm adding this is like a two-part magnetic snap which I like for the t for my closures because it's you know it's very secure um, but you'll see in the end here why I, I kind of messed up on this but pushing that through putting that little washer on there and then I'm using my little tool here my little hammer to pound that that down 
It's on to making my stress straps. I did have a little piece of this fabric left and I am making three inch by, I think my strap measured about 50 inches. So it's, it can be worn across body. And just joining that, those stra straps by mitering that, trimming those seams. And I have one long strap there that measures about three inches wide by about 50 inches. Pressing those seams open, those mitered seams. And then doing my, my strap by pressing it up in the center so the edges meet. And then taking that and folding it again, pressing it. And then I'll be folding it one more time. And this is going to create a three-fourths of an inch um, strap. And I'll top stitch both sides of this. And now this next part I kind of messed up, up on. I forgot to film it. But you can see I just slowed it down here. I did cut about a couple inches of that strap and put little... Um, little loops on both sides and you'll see it better in a little bit here adding my um my lining next and my lining is also cut a little bit bigger I'm just going to lay that top on top both my sides now are, are are um the right sides are facing and just pinning that leaving an opening i'm going all the way around and then trimming that that opening is where i'm going to be turning this right sides just trimming this off as well getting my fingers in there, then turning this. Poking any out any of those little corners there. Now you can see that loop a little bit better there where I, and you'll see I'm gonna be using that to, to secure the strap. Just rolling those seams, and then I will be folding that opening under and top stitching all the way around this. And the top stitching will close that opening. And here it's starting to look like something. I'm going to be um, top stitching or closing the sides of this now. I'm just placing some little clips there to hold it. Making the top of it very secure. I'll be going back and forth a couple times at the top because that will be a stress point. Okay, here's the part where unfortunately I really love that little medallion there on the top. You see that regular little, well, that you're gonna, sh you're gonna see that snap. I should have put the snap in the lining when I didn't. And it was too much to rip it all apart. And so you're gonna see that rock, that washer on the front side. And so I'm gonna have to use a little yo-yo to cover that up. And the fabric was, the, itself was so cool there. So I was, I was a little disappointed, but it worked out great. I mean, it's fine. I'm just gonna, you'll see once I get this little washer through there and those little prongs flattened, I'm gonna just glue a yo-yo on top of that washer. I'll stitch that yo-yo down as well um, at the end here. I just hand stitch it down. And now my stamping, and this is a Dina Wakely stamp. It's the gals in quotes. I just love it because it has like little words of, of affirmation or, or just, you know, boosters. And I thought this would just be a fun little message for somebody in a bag. It says strong with a little lady's um, image. And I'm going to, again, hand stitch that on as well. You'll see it at the end. Now getting these little straps, I'm just going to stick it right on through that little loop and just tie a knot. This is great because you can remove that if you just want to clutch um, or you can shorten the strap if you want to shorten it. Different people with different heights too. Sometimes you just needed a different height or maybe you just want a shoulder bag instead of a, a crossbody bag. But that is it. I have some pictures here at the end. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, give it a try just going into a thrift store and looking for a couple things and, and see what you can create with it. Hope you have a chance to create this week. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye for now.